with the, the main core of this talk, which is really about the way in which you as parents can help and support your child at home. So I'm going to talk about to dys dyslexia, and in particular to start with the early years. Now, the early years, we mean reception, year one, beginning of year two. And I think the three main tips that I would want to get across in these very early years, if a child has been identified with a literacy problem is first of all reading to your child. This is absolutely critical. Reading to your child on a regular, if possible, daily basis because this helps to develop so many early skills. It helps to develop the child's vocabulary knowledge. Children learn their vocabulary not just by hearing words around them being spoken, but they acquire a vocabulary through listening to parents read and eventually through their own reading experiences. Having your child sit down and listen to you while you read them a story greatly helps to develop their attention span as well. It helps them to develop their listening concentration. And it also helps to develop something that we call listening comprehension. Understanding and remembering what somebody has told to you. And we know that having good listening comprehension is a very important aspect of later reading comprehension. As children get older, as you move from reception class into year one, you'll expect the child to start reading with you, and you won't just be reading at them all the time. So it might just be starting off with asking the child to read one or two familiar words from a story that you'd expect them to be able to read, like very commonplace words like cat and dog and with and so on, and then gradually engaging the child more and more in a shared reading experience. So as a parent, you read a sentence and then they read a sentence, until eventually, by the time they're in year two, they should be taking over more and more of the reading experience. A second tip is about this very important phenomenon in dyslexia that we call phonological awareness, which is speech sound awareness. It's children's understanding that when they hear a word, it can be broken down into its constituent speech sounds. And we know that children with dyslexia have a lot of problems in being able to hear, be aware of, and to manipulate the speech sounds in words. For children who haven't got dyslexia, this is actually quite an easy skill for them to develop. By the time they're three, four, and eventually five years of age, they've got a very good understanding of how to play with sounds in words. But this is very difficult for dyslexia, for children with dyslexia to acquire. So one of the most important things that parents can do in reception class and on into year one is to do these phonological or sound-based games with their children. And there are lots of sort of phonological games that you can play with kids. The most obvious one that we're all very aware of is I spy. I spy with my little eyes, something beginning with k. This draws children's attention to beginning sounds in words. You can do more obvious alliteration games as well, like how many words can you think of that begin with the sound s? How many words can you think of that begin with the sound d? and so on. Rhyming is another aspect of phonological awareness and you can play rhyming games with children as young as four and five. So you can say to them, for instance, do these two words rhyme? Cat, pat. And obviously the answer to that is yes. Do these two words rhyme? Cat, can. And obviously they don't. So you can play lots of sort of rhyming games. And then there are other sorts of phonological activities like blending sounds together to form <laughs> words. So you say one sound at a time, slowly, and see if your child can identify the word that you're making. So, k -a -t makes cat, s -t -i -k makes stick. And then when children are a little bit older, they start to be able to play with sounds in words. They can actually manipulate sounds in words. They can take away a sound from a word. Cat without the k says at, meat without the t says me. These are all the sorts of games that you can play with children aged four, five, and six. Obviously, when you're four, you're going to be breaking words into syllables. You might be doing a little bit of um, rhyming. When you're five, you can do things like alliteration. And it's probably not until you're six that you can ta start taking 
sounds away from words, but lots of sort of sound-based games may be accompanied by pictures that you can do at home to help draw your child's attention to the sounds within words. Because we know that if children are aware of sounds in words, it makes it so much easier for them to learn to read. I think the third most important thing that parents of very young children can do in reception class is to make sure that they have lots of opportunities to learn the letter sounds to know the individual sounds that go with each letter of the alphabet, starting with sounds rather than names, and giving the child lots of opportunity to practice these, whether you use flashcards or, or little coloured alphabet things that you stick on walls, but lots and lots of practice in doing this. We know from research that when children link their awareness of sounds in words with their experience of letters, then they form a connection between sounds and letters. And being able to connect sounds and letters is what phonic learning is all about. And once they can do that, they will really forge ahead. What about the middle years, when children are rather older? So we're now talking about years two and three and beyond that. So I think there are four key tips that I would suggest for the dyslexia in the middle years. The first one is... Keep reading to your child, but more importantly with these older children is you want to get them reading to you. So plenty of daily reading practice is really important. Kids don't have to read for hours on end. You know, 10 minutes every day is quite sufficient, especially for a child with a reading problem. 10 minutes can seem an awful long time to them. So keeping reading sessions really quite short, using reading materials that they find interesting and enjoyable on favourite subjects that they have, and also choosing reading materials that are not too difficult for them so they experience a lot of success with their reading. They want to be able to read most of the words words correctly rather than having you help them all the time. So choosing reading material that's well within their capabilities is important. What does reading practice actually do for kids? Well, the first thing it does is it gives them the opportunity to practice decoding, which is, of course, what they'll be doing a lot of by years two and three. So it gives them the opportunity to sound out words, to practice sounding out, and then you can tell them whether or not they're, they're doing it right and you can, you, know, you can support them in that. It also helps expand their word-specific reading vocabulary and, very importantly, with older children, it builds up their speed and fluency. Um, tip number two, I think, is a very important one, is helping children with keyword spellings. Now, we do know that, in fact, there are a hundred words that we use a lot, what we call high-frequency words, very commonplace words, that actually make up virtually really make up about half of the words that we read and spell. And these are very commonplace words like the and was and so on. And if you can get your children familiar and well-practiced on these high-frequency keyword spellings, you will greatly reduce their spelling error rate. Now, one of the unfortunate things about keyword spellings in English is that so many of them are actually irregular. So they're words like the and was and when, which are irregular words, and they really just have to learn them as whole units. But just learning these keyword spellings and having lots of practice in using them, practice in reading them, using flashcards, practice in reading them within context, and also practice in writing them is really important because if they can get these keyword spellings down, it will really significantly help their spelling. And it's something that I think you can really quite easily do at home. A third tip is to teach some word identification strategies. Now, we know with children who have dyslexia that they have a lot of problems in decoding. That's their core difficulty. They find it very hard to sound out words they don't know. So, obviously, their teachers will be helping them develop decoding strategies. But that's not easy for them. But there are actually other sorts of reading strategies that they can use to supplement their poor deco uh, decoding skills. So they can use context cues. 
and they can use the position of a word in a sentence. Now, here we're obviously talking about prose reading material, and that's usually in a story form. So there's things going in and on in the story that you can draw the child's attention to, which helps them a lot with word identification. So, for instance, if it's a story about sailing, and they come across that notoriously irregular word, yacht, and it is probably the most irregular word in the English language. Even this most notoriously irregular word does have some <coughs> phonic regularity at the beginning and end of the word. It begins with y and it ends with t. So at least those two bits are regular. And so they know it begins with y, ends with a t. It's about sailing. They can't make out what on earth's going on in the middle, but they can they can have a good guess that that's a yacht. So you, what you're doing here is helping the child use the story content, the context of the word within the story, to help them combine it with their decoding, the limited bit of decoding they can do, and come up with the right word. And another example is position of word in sentences. I saw a little boy um, just a couple of weeks ago who was actually quite little, verbally very, very bright, terribly limited reading skills, but he was very good at using the position of a word in a sentence to work out what that word would, would be. So he had to read a little sentence about... Um, about the, um, I, I now help look, and he managed to get look, and he couldn't read the following word, which was after, but he thought, I look, begins with that, after. So what he was using was the position of the word in a sentence to, to help him read the word after, even though he probably couldn't have sounded it out. So it just shows you that you can, there are lots of other strategies that children can use. And I think that when you are reading with your children, you can help draw their attention to these kind of extra clues that they can draw on to help them with word identification. And finally, the most important aspect of reading, of course, is reading comprehension. That's why we read. We read in order to understand and to learn. So it's very important not to get too bogged down with the mechanics of reading and lose sight of reading comprehension. So that whenever you're reading with your child and they're reading stories to you, it's really important to ensure that they're understanding and remembering what they're reading. And this can be done very simply by asking the child to tell the story back to you or by asking them specific questions about what they've read. So I think just those four simple tips for working with your child in the middle age range can just go a long way to really helping them improve with their reading, with their spelling and their reading comprehension.